Okay, let's say you've been invited to a fancy dress party, and you fancy going as Jason Voorhees from the Friday the 13th films. So you go to your local fancy dress shop to see if you can find a suitable hockey mask. But the only thing they stock are these rather plain, tacky novelty items that don't really look anything like the ones from the films. Well, this video will show you how to um, paint these up and customise them so they look a little bit more like the ones from the movies. So then, first thing to do, get rid of this shop label, also remove any stickers from the mask that might still be stuck on there that the shop has put on. Next you're going to need to um, drill some more holes in this, so uh, get a marker pen. Using a picture from the film as a guide, you need to um, mark out a few more holes that you're going to drill in here. So we want, uh, let's see, a couple here, here. These don't have to be exact, just as so long as they're more or less in the right place. I want a couple more there and there. I'm going to leave these two holes as the arm, use those as the um, starter holes for the uh, top ones. So I want another one there, there, there. Okay, and then you're all ready to start drilling these out. Now, for drilling out the holes in your mask, I recommend having a cordless drill for that because um, it's a lot easier when you haven't got you know wires and cables all dangling down in the way. Also, don't make the mistake of trying to drill the uh, full-size holes out first. Use a small bit, like a two and a half mil bit or something, and drill some little pilot holes first, and then drill the larger size holes out. The reason being is these masks are very you know made of very cheap brittle plastic and they're liable to crack. So. Always use a small pilot bit first. Right, so first of all for the pilot holes. Right, again being very careful because this mask is brittle. Just using gentle pressure. There we go, there's all the pilot holes drilled. Now, generally I don't recommend doing this indoors, unfortunately I've had to move inside because the weather's a bit uh, changeable outside. But, um, that's why I've got my um, collapsible workbench here to protect the kitchen surface. So uh, if you're going to do this indoors, just be careful because you don't want your missus killing you for putting holes in her worktops. So, right, now for drilling out the um, main holes, I'm using a 7mm drill bit for this because that's more or less the same size as the ones that are already in the mask. So. Again, using firm but gentle pressure because we don't want to. If you press too hard, you'll split the plastic on this. It's very brittle and breakable. So carefully. And lastly. Well, right, and that's basically it. Right, now that the drilling's over and done with, the next step, um, take a little craft knife. Let's go around and see where, if you can see that, there's all these little burrs and um, reams and bits that the drillers missed. Just got to get your craft knife and just go around each hole, and just very, very carefully take them off. You might have to um, go around the underside as well on some of them. OK, and that's that done, looking a lot smoother, I'm sure you'll agree. Um, now obviously this isn't exact, the holes in this aren't exactly like the ones in the film, like um, this one has a couple of extra holes there and it's got two holes for the nose, whereas the one in the film only had one. Well, um, depending on how far you wanted to take this, I mean you could, you know, fill those in with some model putty or something and then once it's dry sand over it, but it's going to take a lot, lot longer to do all that. And um, it would require several more coats of paint to cover it all up, but uh, most people aren't even going to notice. I wouldn't worry too much. This is just like a quick and dirty job, just so it looks the part for a Halloween costume or something. So, anyway, for this next part, um, obviously this is a bit too flat. We wanted to bend it in a bit, so uh, we're going to have to heat this up. So for this next part, you might want to remove the straps. Now, sometimes they're just threaded through. Other times they're glued. So uh, if they are glued, they just pull apart quite easily, though. So uh, just take the straps off. You can always glue them back on later. I mean, these, if you get a mask like this, they've got these three notches in. You can just like loop the um, 
elastic through a few times it'll hold in place quite nicely which I'll show you later but uh, you can glue them back in again if you just use Gorilla Grip glue or Yoohoo or just some sort of general purpose you know strong general purpose glue you can just glue them back in place so anyway let's peel that off right now we need to boot, bend this in slightly so what I do get a little piece of wire, you can use string for this but um, I don't find wires best pull that, being very careful of course, pull that back on itself and feed that through this side now, let's have a look I don't want to pull this in too much, just should do it I think yeah so I'll just splice that back on itself this is some wire I got out of an old electrical cable it's quite sturdy so we shouldn't have to worry about that now what we need to do now is heat this up just to get it to change shape but um, now some people recommend putting this in the oven on a low setting I would not recommend that at all there's a much easier way of warming this up right now what I do to heat it up is just get a large pan full of boiling water and just gently place the mask in like so <coughs> the water's hot enough to soften the plastic but it's not too hot that it'll melt it so I use the boiling water method now I mean some people put these in the ovens or recommend using like a heat gun like a paint stripper gun but you do that you're liable to melt the plastic this way it heats the um, plastic gently doesn't melt it just leave that there for a few minutes okay this has been in about two minutes you don't need to leave this in here for very long I mean it's very sort of like thin flimsy plastic so um, just carefully take that out remember to use tongs because this water is boiling then just move this round here place it in a bowl of cold water just to set it okay well this has been in there a couple of minutes just to cool off uh, I can now take it out um, I don't recommend taking the wire out just yet as it is liable to spring back into shape um, best I would recommend leave, hanging this up to dry somewhere and leaving it overnight before we move on to painting. So I'm going to hang this up somewhere now. Right, well, I've um, left this overnight for this to set hard. So it should be safe to take this off now. Very careful. Ah, yes. Yeah, it's looking much curvier. Right, now on to the painting. Now, I recommend giving this a quick rub down with some uh, wet and dry paper first. I use 400 grip for this because if you don't, when you go to spray it up, it'll just when you go to put the mask on, it'll just flake off again. So uh, get a bit of water, give it a good light rub down. I'm using 400 grip wet and dry here. Should do the trick. Just to take the shine off, give the paint something to key to. Yeah, that should do it. What I recommend you do now is just wash this in a bit of uh, soapy water, you know, get with some dishwashing detergent, and then uh, rinse it and then hang it up to dry. Don't be tempted to use your hair dryer on there because it um, might warp the mask again. But uh, yeah, just clean it off with a bit of um, warm soapy water, rinse and leave to dry, and then we'll get on to painting. Okay, we've moved outside for this part because you don't really want to be doing any spray painting inside your house. Now, um, if you wanted to um, mark the axe cut out, you just remove this section here. Yeah, use a junior hacksaw blade or something and be very, very careful because uh, it's very cheap plastic and it does, you know, split and crack easily. But anyway, I'm doing the part three mass, we won't worry about that. Now, where uh, you want some sort of creamy yellow paint, um, this stuff, it's made by plastic coat. This is, um, I think it's antique white, it's called. There is, this is a gloss paint. There is a matte one, but uh, and that appears to be a different colour entirely, so I'm sticking with the gloss. Anyway, give a few more coats and see what happens.
Okay, we'll just let that draw for a few minutes and we'll come back and give it another quick coat. Okay, well I've left this about 20 minutes just for the um, paint just to flash off, just tacking out. So I'm just going to give it another quick coat. Any bits we might have missed before. And that should do. It's always best to spray several light coats rather than one um, heavy coat. I mean, it's best to keep the air, obviously keep the aerosol moving and just spray it from about I don't know 12, 15 inches away, just in light dustings, and that should do the trick. Okay, this has been left to dry overnight, and um, the only thing left to do now is to add the uh, triangle details on here, or the chevrons, whatever you want to call them. Now, um, there's a couple of different ways you can do that. You can either carefully pencil them in using a picture from the film as a guide and then paint them in by hand using a model brush and some gloss paint. Um, doesn't, you know, it's a little tricky to do but it doesn't matter if it's perfect so at the end of the day it's just a Halloween, you know, cheap Halloween mask, you know, no one's going to look too closely but um, the easiest way to do it I've found is to um, get some of the, a sheet of this self-adhesive vinyl. Uh, you can get this from uh, most craft or hobby stores if not you can get it in sheets off eBay and just you know cut the details out you know it's a lot easier to do that way these just you know have a bit of a bit of sticky on the back which you just peel off and just stick them straight on so do that now okay and that is essentially it um, if you just want a clean version of the mask, that'll do you. All you've got to do now is just thread the straps back through. Um, if you want to dirty it up, there's a few tricks you can do for that. I've got a knackered old mask that I've been experimenting on here. All you have to do is um, get some black and some brown model paint, the acrylic, I hasten to add. Just dunk your, the end of your model brush in the end, and then uh, wipe the end off on some uh, kitchen tissue or something until there's hardly any on there. And then all you do is just dust over the holes like that lightly and it'll sort of leave this um, sort of dirty light dirty effect on here do all around the holes, around the eyes and around the edges of the mask, go over in black and then add a bit of brown afterwards and uh, that'll give you a nice weathered look if you've got an axe cut in the mask there's um, two ways you can go about painting the blood on if you want to add blood now if you want wet blood you can get this um, translucent red model paint. The uh, Humble do this stuff called um, transparent clear colour red. And uh, if you dab it on, it looks just like blood. Just, you know, um, dunk the end of your brush in and just dab around like that. Make sure to lay it on thick nearer where the uh, cut mark is, and that'll look like um, freshly dried blood. If you want to go for the um, caked on blood look that's been there a while get some very dark red model paint and dab that round and that'll look like dried on blood then but uh, whichever one you do is up to you but uh, essentially that's it now all you need is the rest of your costume and you're ready to go okay here's a mask with the straps back on you can see I've just sort of threaded these through and looped them back on themselves that should be enough to hold them in place you can glue them back in if you want um, as I say, a bit of uh, Gorilla Grip glue or you who will do the trick, or if you're any good at um, sewing, just put a couple of stitches in, that'll do the trick. Or you could even um, go to a dressmaking shop or haberdashery and get some you know, decent elastic or strap making material and put your own straps on here. But, uh, just for a sheer ease, I'd just recommend just threading it back through if I were you. This is a case of putting it together with the rest of your costume.